the subconscious intoxication we're all experiencing, whether we realize it or not, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the drum brings you back. You, you have compassion for how difficult it is, right? Wisdom is understanding that you don't understand. Rabbit hole goes yes, really, really deep. Absolutely. There might not be end to the, absolutely, the rabbit hole. Absolutely, yeah. You're a musician and your body is your instrument. The music is not an excuse for you to jump around. That does not validate dance. You mentioned the real stuff. I think you use that term, the real stuff, when you refer to mambo. Right. Um, is there a reason, um, like were you referring to the difference between one and two or some other st style of dancing? I think, I think uh, what, I, and what I will always, my perception of the way the dance works will always be colored by my experience with ballroom and ballroom's um, commercialization of ethnic dances, right? And so, for example, in tango, you, you have tango, you have ballroom tango. Right. And then you, the Argentines have to put the moniker of Argentine tango to distinguish the fact that that's not ballroom, right? Mm -hmm. And so... That's what I think I'm talking about, right? And, and the funny thing is, uh, not to get super esoteric, but the funny thing is that in my time, we were the, we were the anti-ballroom movement, you know? Mm -hmm. There wasn't something we said, but we prided ourselves in not being that ultra-refined, ultra-European-influenced white person's stuff, right? We were the antithesis of that, right? We were the real deal. We were the gritty, the, the, the you know, because we were from New York, the street stuff, you mm -hmm. know, the stuff that was developed there in the clubs that wasn't concerned with the glitz and the straight lines and the, and the stuff that don't necessarily come from the Afro-Caribbean uh, um, paradigm, right? So... Because w when you look at it, the, the depth of, of sophistication musically, right, and the way it's represented in the dance in an improvised way on the dance floor since the time of the Palladium. And, and, and that's not when it starts. It starts with the African-American dancers in the, in, the, in the Lindy and the swing movements that predate the Palladium, which is represented in the Caribbean, right? In the Caribbean, the Afro-Caribbean uh, dancers, they are manifesting that same concept. Uh, it's a jazz concept, right? Of, of, of creating musically with your body in a moment, right? And that there's nothing scripted about that moment and there's nothing about that moment that will be the same at any other time, right? It manifests that way in that moment because that's what happened then, right? That's a very African concept. In, in the Colombia tradition in Cuba, the Bomba tradition in Puerto Rico, and countless other traditions in the French Caribbean as well, there are, um, there are elements of of dancer music interaction where the dancer is actually dictating to the drummer mm -hmm. and the drummer's trying to follow the dancer's prompts, right? Mm. And so it's reversed from the way we think about music. We think about expressing music and the music right. exists first and we're responding to it. But there's a bunch of African-based ethnic traditions that are the reverse. The drummer is trying to follow the dancer. The, the lesson there is that there is no point of origin, right? Is that we're doing the same thing. We're coming from the same place, expressing the same things or manifesting the same things. We're just doing it in different planes of, of, uh, of being able to observe them, right? I, I can observe the drummer with my ears and I can observe the, the dancer with my eyes. Right. But we're manifesting the same thing. Nobody's really leading the, the charge here, right?
we're musicians also. That's, that doesn't exist in, in European uh, classical concept, right? That, that the, 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 the physical manifestation and the, and the aesthetic of the, the classical side of things is extremely specific. And it's much more about what the body can do and how the body looks good doing it than trying to refine that to an almost grotesque degree, right? I, I have a lot of respect for classical dances. Um, but I don't have respect for people who think that that's the only thing that exists, right? And that you can't have valuable dance unless you apply a white European context to it. That does not validate dance, right? That's a very specific way of thinking. They have specific goals and they're really good at achieving those goals and that's wonderful and I respect that. Um, but our goals are completely different and, and our, our problem usually is that we get seduced by that, right? The fact that there's the only good music is classical music, which is white male European idea of what good music is. And there are multiple super sophisticated, super complex musical systems in other parts of the world that don't follow this, the classical formats, right? Um, and so, you know, th there's a lot to be said about that as uh, an influence and in how it affects us. Because even, even Cuban dancers today, because they have access to so much education-wise, they're very intelligent people, and they're very well-trained dancers. And they get all of it, right? They, dance is dance, so they get all the classical stuff, and they pride themselves in the fact that they are trained dancers. And the, the, the problem is that there isn't a cultural, you know, the, the, the cultural fight doesn't extend to that, right? It doesn't extend to the fact that, wait a minute, you're saying that I, you're a real dancer because you do classical dance, but you're doing all this African and Afro-Caribbean stuff that makes you just as valid as a dancer that has nothing to do and won't have anything to do with any of those elements, you know? And so why weren't you a real dancer before you did the real dance training? And it has to do with training. I think people's concept of, of going through a system that is established, that has centuries of establishment and has gotten good at the formula of producing what it's trying to produce. Whereas the ethnic dances are learned in a very informal way, right? You, you, this is how you do it. You got to feel it and you got to do it like this, right? Whereas there are exercises in these other disciplines. Right? And so what happens is that they look down upon the fact that you haven't gone through a system of training. And that's very different than the elements that the system produces, right? The, the, having a system isn't uh, specific to European classical concept. You, you can have a system because I went through it in martial arts, right? Okinawan martial arts is as, as grassroots and as, you know, as ethnic as it gets. Mm -hmm. When it gets to Japan, it turns into a, almost a semi-sport, and now it becomes super, super formalized and super, you know, now competition and all the thing. And But you look at the way these people trained in Okinawa before it got to Japan, and, and it reminds me of that stuff, like the being in the dirt and, and being barefoot and like really experiencing where this music comes from, where this dance comes from with your body. The, 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 the primalness of it, right? The primitiveness of it. The fact that you get to be in touch with the, the animal that you are, right? That is the subconscious intoxication we're all experiencing whether we realize it or not, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the drum brings you back. Mm -hmm. you, it doesn't matter where you were born, right? It doesn't matter what your genetics are telling you right now. Your genetics lead you right back to that drum if you follow it far enough. And that drum is in all of us, right? Because it, it reminds your lizard brain, it reminds your subconscious of what you're supposed to be, the animal you're supposed to be. 
And being in touch with that is is intoxicating, right? To, to get down, get dirty, and use your body to the way it's supposed to be used, right? If you look at ethnic dances, the, the, the modes of movement, the reasons why we move, the reasons why human beings have movement in the first place, the reason why we're not trees sitting in a, in a, in a garden somewhere, all those things are present in the ethnic dances. You look at them and you see them all. You see migration, you see combat, you see procreation, you, like all the reasons why you need to move, they're represented and reflected in that. And they utilize the body the way the body is supposed to be utilized. And, and that is such a different thing than training yourself to do these otherworldly things that a very select few people will be able to deal with. And you're only going to be able to deal with that for a very specific time in your life because, you know, it's got an expiration date, right? Because your body's not going to be able to, to sustain that for too long, right? And it's beautiful to see, but it has no bearing on the human condition, and it's elitist, right? It's for the very best. Whereas I believe that what we do is in everyone and is, it is uh, everyone deserves to be able to experience that subconscious return to their, to their true self, to their animal self, to the, you know, not the clothing, not the technology, but the, you know, the primalness, right? I have two dogs, uh, two Basenjis. Basenjis are African dogs, and they're basically wild dogs. They, they uh, appear in nature exactly as they are. We haven't genetically manipulated them, right? Dogs, almost every dog breed we've messed with to create them to be separate uh, or a specific way. These guys are the way they are, and they've been like this for centuries. The pharaohs used to give them as gifts. They're in Egyptian hieroglyphics. They're one of the oldest breeds around. To watch them, like, loose at a dog park, is fascinating to me like it's so fascinating to observe something that knows exactly what it's supposed to be and is so connected to that you know what i mean like the that gives me chills just like thinking about it you know they're primitive in a different way than like domesticated dogs are you know that you you see it in them the way that in their eyes and the way they do things, the way they run, like the, the, my little girl looks like she was born to run, like somebody, an engineer designed her to run. Like when she's running, she looks the most happy, the most fulfilled, you know, like there's just a fulfillment and a wisdom there because they're not smart enough to think themselves out of what they're supposed to be. They are what they are and they get it, you know. And we, because of our intelligence and our ability to, create all this stuff, we trick ourselves into not remembering and not understanding what we're about, you know, what all this is, is meant for. And I really believe that the, the, these, when that drum and those rhythms hit, there's a call back, you know, to that part of your brain that gets it, that's still connected to that, that puts you there in that trance where you are the way you're supposed to be. And that's what I think that the trance is about. It's why we, we are so locked into this stuff and why this has endured for so long, you know? But that, that as a concept is not what I see when I look at ballroom. And sadly, it's not what I see when I look at dancers today on stage because the ballroom sensibility seems to be, once again, the prevalent sensibility now in what I see, we're back to this idea of the ultra refined and the ultra um, specific in the direction of classical dance and those things and the sparkles and the and the and the you know the 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 the, the overemphasis of makeup, you know, the, the those are all ballroom competition things, you know, the the outfits, the costumes people wear are ripped right from ballroom competition costumes. You know, like there's no other concept of, you know, how we should be dressed and how we can present this stuff. It's, it's very specific and it's very in the direction of the stuff that we, in my generation, were so averse to. Because it was like, ha, you know, that's the, that's the polished, shiny, you know, glitzy uh, misinterpretation of the thing that we live and that we grew up living, you know? Mm -hmm.
so yeah, that's what I mean when I say the the real thing or the real deal. You know, it's it's being connected into. You know, we get on stage, but they're they're specifically with me. There are ways to do that in a way that doesn't compromise how I feel about that whole that whole paradigm. You know, the idea of the of the and refinement is not again refinement isn't something that's specific to classical dance. It's that when we think of refinement we always our brain always goes there you know and it, it because we don't have systems in place to develop the abilities that we wish to develop we just try to hope that through some kind of osmosis that they happen to us and we make up exercises in an uninformed way that doesn't really affect our bodies it's just that you you could do it already and you're providing this exercise for people who may not be able to do it, but the exercises aren't well thought out. They don't have generations of, of efficacy behind them to prove that they function so that we have a formula to develop Afro-Caribbean dancers into the max potential of what's there to be explored without the interference of the classical concept. You know, And so it hasn't had time to breathe on its own yet because it keeps getting suffocated by this, you know, weak, and it's our fault, right? It's Latinos ourselves, we're muddying the water. And so everybody that comes into this world thinks that Latin dance is all about sexy, sexy. That's the only thing that, you know, you gotta show a butt cheek, or you can't be on stage, you gotta be in heels, or you can't be on stage, you gotta be half naked. You know, it's gotta be about sexuality. Otherwise, it's not Latin dance, and that's offensive. You know, that's offensive for, for, for you know, I, the, there's a movie, Along Came Polly, with Jennifer, uh, Jennifer, <laughs> friends, Anistine, Jennifer Anistine and Ben Stiller, right? So at, at one point she goes to a nightclub and she's dancing and she's dancing all sexy with this Cuban guy and Ben Stiller gets upset and gets jealous and he's like, oh, you're a rug grinding on the guy. And she's like, hey, it's just salsa, it's just salsa. And I, you know, like, it was this funny moment in the movie, but I was so offended, you know, like, that that's what the general public thinks of what we do, you know? And we don't give them much good reason to think otherwise, because we're the ones propagating the, you know what I mean? It's like, we, we, I don't think we stop to think for two seconds how that looks to the rest of the world and why we are not afforded opportunities, because we're dismissed immediately, because in the... In the fine arts, the second you say Latin dancing, they think dirty dancing, right? Because we haven't shown them much else, you know? And then everybody that comes into it comes into it thinking that that's what they want out of it. And so you have white people and Asian people and people that are outside the culture who come in to engage in this hypersexualized Latin thing. And, you know, nobody's telling them that it's any different or that there's any different possibilities you know and it's fine that that exists and that sexuality is part of what we're doing the problem is that it's the it can't be the only thing that exists right there has to be representation of the entire gamut right the entire spectrum should be expressed and there's not a lot of range in the way people understand the dance. They, they understand it in a very specific way you see it in performances they can only dance the way they dance there's not a lot of range. You don't see them playing with different uh, tempos and different uh, feelings and expressions of sentiment. And they don't even change the music they're using. They don't, they don't do cha-cha-chas as much. They're not doing son montunos. Nobody's doing boleros. Nobody. They don't do Mozambique. They don't do, you know, bomba, right? This is all stuff that's part of salsa. But it's not what anybody's getting in their dance studio it's not what people are seeing on stage and it perpetuates itself right because now that's all you know that's all you see there's nowhere else to go you know and and it uh it doesn't leave us much room it doesn't leave us a platform from which to argue anything you know um i i i am not a fan of dance I find dance to be a very pretentious, I find it to be a very pretentious endeavor. Most dancers walk around with this air of like, and, and they like to talk about technique and the thing, and it's very stuffy, you know? It's not very human, you know? And I, I come from this 
from this upbringing of humility and discipline and like, you know, my, my master, right? Like the, this prodigious martial artist was the most gentle, most humble, you know, like I carried his bags for like 10 years. I carried his bag, it was a third degree, fourth degree black belt and I'm carrying his bags around, you know? That doesn't, I don't see that in dance. I've spent time with dancers, the classical dancers, like, so you think you can dance dancers in, in, in uh, events around the world. There's a world dance week that, that they, there's a regular thing that happens in Italy. Uh, they do it, they did it in Italy when I did it. Um, but they bring all these choreographers and a lot of people, choreographers from So You Think You Could Dance, they were there. and. I didn't know who I was taking pictures with. The people were like, oh my God, that's Stacy so-and-so. And you know, the conversations I heard these people engaged in made me sick to my stomach. You know, it was like, it, it was just so like, ha hardly anybody looked me in the eye. You know, it was like, there was no humanity about what was going on. It was all this like technique and thing. And, and I heard one of the like most famous women there talking about how she has to lie on resumes and say she's 30 years old or else she has no chance of competing with these younger dancers and i'm like wow you know like as well known as you are being older and being wiser is a detriment in your you know like i, I don't want to be part of something like that anyway yeah i i find it stuffy i find people that uh like i i feel that way about singers also like it's very rare when I see a singer that's a really good singer that I don't find that they're, that's it's, it's a, like this self-indulgent, pretentious mm -hmm. thing, you know? Because I grew up with this girl who was so beautiful and I was, had such a crush on her when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, and she would not stop singing. Like she was always singing, she could sing, but it was like, shut up, we know you can sing. Like I felt like she was doing it to keep proving to us she can sing and it was like, you know, there's a way to do that when you really hear somebody with talent and it's just not pretentious, right? It just, right. It's, and it's very rare to find dancers at a very high level that, ex that exhibit that, that humanness mm -hmm. where it's not full of all this pretentiousness, right? That you, you've been through so much to achieve what you achieved that you have compassion for people who are on the road but haven't put the time in you, you have compassion for how difficult it is, right? You, you, you can't respect what you've achieved if you put others down because they haven't achieved it because it means that, what you, that, that, it's, that it should be, everybody should be able to buy it in, in two seconds or two years, right? I know what I went through. I know what anybody else is going to have to go through to achieve the understandings that I've achieved. And I have compassion for that, you know, like that, that I, I feel for them, you know? I'm still on my journey. I, I haven't gotten anywhere. There's nowhere to get. I'm, I'm still moving. But I look back and I hope that they have the, the strength to go through the things they're going to have to go through to really transcend these levels of understanding that's going to really reap the benefits of being involved in something like this for a long period of time. And that's what you should find at the end of the day, right? Greatness should yield humility because that's what we all ultimately figure out, right? It, uh, to, to be good at something, to understand something gives you sight. It's like understanding how far we are from the closest star, right? There, there's 200 billion stars in this galaxy. There's 200 billion galaxies. The closest one is 70 light years away, right? The closest one to us. Like, we don't, we can't even, like, we don't even operate that way, you know? And so when you think about it, you know, like to know that calms you down in a certain sense, right? It's, well, my problems are not that big. The earth disappeared tomorrow. The universe is unaffected, right? Mm -hmm. It's like unaffected. It's so trivial. And that to me is so liberating, right? It's calm down. It doesn't matter what, where you are or what you think you are compared to somebody else because there's so much that is possible to be that you haven't touched yet that you may never have the capacity to even reach but the better you get the further you can see in terms of possibility and the smaller you feel it's called the catherine uh, the, the uh, kruger dunham effect right it's a scientifically um documented uh 
phenomena where, where people who are just starting to learn something have a proportionally over-exaggerated confidence in what they understand, mm -hmm. whereas people who are really experts in a subject mm -hmm. have a, a like proportionately low opinion of what they understand, right? Wisdom is understanding that you don't understand, right? It's different from intelligence, which is knowing what you know, instead of understanding that you will never understand more than what you don't understand. It's just not, there's, there's so much that's out there, you know? And that calms you down, you know? It, it allows you to keep working even when your body starts to give out on you because there, you realize that the secret, that the essence can't be about youth and athleticism. It can't be, right? It, that can't be the truth. The, the older practitioners in martial arts prove that all the time, right? They prove that to me as a kid growing up all the time, right? It can't be that you have to be young and fit mm -hmm. to reach the highest levels of something. It's, it's asinine, right? It's like saying that your childhood is the, is the max that you will ever be in your life, you know? Your, your brain doesn't stop developing until 25, you know? At 30 years old, you're too old for some sports, right? right. It's, it, what's, what are you talking about? Like, what are you, what's going on? So, yeah, the, the real thing, the question was, <laughs> the question was the real thing versus not the real thing. Yeah, that's my answer, you know? Like, the, 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 and I didn't even understand that at the time. It was just very much about, we're not doing ballroom. That's not like we do Argentine tango. They do ballroom tango. You know, like the separation is palpable, and we're in the underground community that gets together and does that not for fame or for prizes or for competitions, but because this is how we live and we understand it at a cultural level. You know, at a, at a at an essential level. You know, it's we're where it comes from, and there kind of imitating, it's a bad imitation of what we do, you know? That's what I guess I, I was talking about and what I'm, what I, I'm trying to say in this long-winded uh, explanation. I love the depth of your thinking and <laughs> how many levels you go, yeah. you know, below the initial, initial, you know, surface level. And I can relate to it very much because in the beginning, the first year, I'm, I'm going to be two years dancing in April, May of this year. And so in the first year, once I learned a few moves and once I got out on the dance floor and could actually lead, you know, my partner, right. I started feeling like, you know, like what you were saying, mm -hmm. right? I started feeling like, okay, you know, I got it. Or I got I'm this. getting it. Yes, I, right. I, I, did, I never felt like I got it, right. but I, I started feeling like I'm getting it. And then recently, when I started talking to more people, interviewing more people, and learning about the art, mm -hmm the fusion mm -hmm. all the different you know countries and continents that contribute to the to the art and mm -hmm. you know how it all evolved um i completely completely understand and plus there's just so many parts yeah. there's a musical part there's self-expression part Absolutely. there's a technique part right there's there's just like, i was just texting my friend telling them the rabbit rabbit hole goes yes. really really deep Absolutely. there might not be end to the, to the rabbit hole Absolutely, yeah so i completely relate that but i'm also curious to know from, a, from your perspective, you know, what would be your advice? Because you did mention proper development. Yes. Right? What your advice would be to a new dancer like myself to be able to, do, to develop correctly and to actually do justice to the art itself? It, 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 you, understanding, where, understanding where everything comes from, pardon me, Understanding where everything comes from is where it starts. There's, there's two elements that I think are essential to, to keeping you honest, right? Where does this stuff come from and what does that mean, right? And when I say where does this come from, I'm talking about like Africa, right? At the, at the essential level. The, the, the idea of partner dance is a European idea, right? The, 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 the Franco-German waltzes that were introduced to the Caribbean at that time, they're why we hold on to each other the way we hold on to each other and why the danson was danced the way it was danced. It's very European. And that's where the mambo kind of comes from is the danson. But at the end of the day, you are 
dancing to music with a band comprised of instruments that are European and these two sets of drums, right, that are absolutely unchanged from West Africa as they were in West Africa and are still being utilized in those band, right? Somebody wrote once, uh, a student sent me an article uh, where a woman said that of all the African-American art forms, salsa is the most African of those art forms, right? Because none of the other art forms, not jazz, not R&B, not any of those other musical genres include that African drum as part of their mm -hmm. repertoire, right? The funny thing is that I, I the, the first song that I played in the first workshop that I did here at this event was a song uh, by Curtis Mayfield. And it's a funk song, but that song starts with a conga, right? And it starts to go into a wawango, da dum boom boom ba, da dum boom boom ba, right? It, and the song is kind of like, has this undertone with that conga. Anytime there's a conga present in music, in popular music, my ear immediately, da, 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 shut up, there's a conga here, right? Because it, there's a very specific quality that that gives to music, and that becomes fair game now. That you, you, that's a Latin song, no matter what they're right. doing. Right. Uh, sometimes clave is the same way. There's a song uh, by Zero Seven that starts straight with straight clave. It's a, it's a pop song, but it's it pop, 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 pop. It starts with this clave and then turns into. So, anywho, uh, that drum means something, right? And the fact that it's African-based means something. And, and you don't have to go and study African dances. But if you just observe a West African class, or you observe like classes that are, that, are, that are still traditional in their Africanness, whether it's the, like Yoruba dances, whether it's Bomba and Plena in Puerto Rico, or, or the, the, uh, the rumba tradition in, in Cuba, when you see that stuff, it's all over the Caribbean, Martinique, Guadeloupe. You realize what that drum means, right? It means something, even the way the class is structured. Right. You get a sense of, shit, you know, this is, this is what the, the real thing is, right? This is what that drum being there means to this whole situation, right? We, we are Westerners who grow up on pop music in 4-4 time that is shaped by blues, the blues format, the 4-4 blues format. Mm -hmm. But, and so we listen to music that way. We, we, we listen to lyrics and we sing the lyrics and we're always, you know, following the piano and we, the horns and like a lot, a lot, a lot, right? But when you see these traditions where there may not be vocals, it's just the drum, right? And you see how that goes about. It gives you a lot of insight into what's going on here it allows you to be more discerning with your eye in terms of information that's valid and valuable and information that may be colored by things that have nothing to do with what this is ultimately about the other thing is music first right music first the music is not an excuse for you to jump around right you're a musician and your body is your instrument, and you have to go through all the things musicians go through in terms of learning how to use your instrument, what the complexities are, having rudiments that you practice on a regular basis that keep developing your skill sets with your instrument the way you're supposed to, whether it's scales or, you know, paratiri, babaratiris that they do on the, on the, on the drum, babatiri, babatiri, babatiri. Those paratiri things, those rudiments, they practice like they practice scales, single, single, double, double, single, single, double, double, so that percussionists can get, you know, their chops. You know, they learn, they get their skill sets. You work on that for the rest of your life. You keep evolving, you know. But you work like a musician. You get your cues from music. And you understand what that drum means, and it's hard to go astray, you know? 
it's hard to find the right person with the right information nowadays. It's difficult, it's very difficult. And even if you find that person, they may not be accessible to you. But if you, if you follow these parameters, you are less likely to be seduced by crap that's going to lead you to a dead end where you will be an imitator of, 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 the, of something that you don't even realize you carry with you all the time. You are no less uh, deserving of it than anybody else, right? Just because you were born someone else, somewhere else. It's a human thing, right? It just so happens that because of slavery and because of those traditions, that human thing has been preserved in certain ways in certain regions and exists still to this day as an echo that cultures will follow. And for others, they have to go somewhere else to hear this echo as a, as a first time thing, whereas that echo is where they're from anyway, right? Nobody's outside of the culture of what this stuff is. It's human, you know? It, that's what's beautiful about it is that it's, everybody should have access to it. Everybody can, everybody, uh, there's uh, a concept called entrainment where your brain waves will match the brain waves of uh, a rhythm at a certain frequency. Once the rhythm gets to a certain frequency, your brain waves will match the frequency. They, they do that in house, right? And trance music, like that, that dunch, 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 mm -hmm. dunch, 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 your brain just, and you get, and these kids get into a trance. And of yeah. course, they're doing, you know, taking pills and shit also. But, but, but uh, that samba, right? When you hear carnival music in the Caribbean, right? Uh, um, comparsa, right? When you hear comparsa uh, and, you know, paranda music in the Caribbean, it's like, you know, like you, you have to move, like, you're, because your brain immediately locks onto this stuff and you get into this. It's been used in ritual and, and in, 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 uh, in uh, you know, ritualistic engagement where music and chanting, anytime you have chanting, you're taught, you're, it's entrainment, prayer does that, you know, the, 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 the rhythmical uh, vocalizations and intonations of the voice put you in this entrained state where you feel like you're in a, in a trance. That's what it's all about. That's what the Holy Ghost is about. That's what people losing it in Bembez and getting possessed by Chango. That's what it's all about. It's entrainment. Your brain locks in and you become part of this rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. in a subconscious way where you're not really the driver anymore. You know, that's what this shirt means. You know, the shirt, this, this let mambo do you mm -hmm. is that you should never be the one driving, right? It sh you should always be the passenger. The thing, you have to let the thing I mean, the, the, the word mambo is a Bantu word that means a conversation with the gods. A conversation with the gods, that's what I'm talking about, right? The connection to your original self where you're no longer present, you're no longer uh, separate from music or other people or your environment or the air or the floor. You don't recognize those separations, you just feel part of the flow, right? That's real mambo, right? Because the word mambo, the actual word, which was adopted by musicians to, exp to express something specific in the way that music was starting to feel, comes from the use of that word is very interesting, right? The fact that they use that word. And it, it means a conversation with God. And you, you, understanding that, right? If you're doing it, it can't be mambo, right? If you're the one doing it, it can't be mambo. It, if, it has to be doing you in order for you to be in that conversation. And that doesn't require you to be able to do Suzy Q in a certain way or move your body. And it, it, it requires your ability to access that trance. And once you're there, your body knows what to do, man. I mean, whether it's pretty to somebody else or not, it's functioning from that place that is the important thing. It's not what manifests afterwards. We train ourselves so that what comes out is comprehensive, right? In other words, Jimi Hendrix just starts playing and he's not present, right? You see Jimi Hendrix doing a solo, he's not there anymore, right? He's gone. Bob Marley, they're gone. They're in another place. But what comes out, Prince, right? What comes out 
we can appreciate it makes sense. They're doing things that are intelligent on a level of intelligence that can only be done if you're in the moment allowing your consciousness to come through your instrument, right? It, it, you can't plan it. You know, it, it, it's, you have to be in that state for it to come out that way. That's the important part. It doesn't matter what you look like doing it. We, we, we're, we're trying to look better and be more intelligent about what comes out when we're in that state. And so that's what the work is. The work is us refining our subconscious so that we become naturally attuned to representing things in specific ways that aren't specific in terms of being uh, enslaving you, having to look ex explicitly a certain way, but that concepts will manifest themselves using the ground, bringing movement from through your body and showing the, the chain of movement through your body so that it makes sense, so that your shoulder moved because you took a step and it ended up, boom, in your shoulder, right? And you take that step rhythmically because you learned a pattern that had a song to it. And so whatever results in your body from that pattern now is infused with that song that that step is teaching you, right? And so it's never the step that is the important thing. It's the song that it carries, right? It's the, it's the rhythmical phrase that it's teaching you. And you're learning this one specific way of representing that rhythmical phrase. And if the rhythmical phrase is the source of the movement in the rest of your body, then your entire body is functioning through that phrase, not just your feet. And so it, you have to, the feet have to be the source. That connection to the ground, the way we change weight has to be the source because that's where our music is inherent. That's our, that's, those are the strokes that we would see in a music, on a written music. That's how we're playing our patterns. And then the movement shouldn't be something we put on top of it. It has to be something now born specifically from, and I should be able to trace it. It should look um, logical and proportional to what happened with your feet, right? I always tell people you have to validate what's happening in your body, your upper body. I need to see it where it came from in your feet. You can't just show me something. Movement for the sake of movement is dead. It's, uh, in Zen, they call that dead speech. Mm. You're talking about something, but it's too cognitive. You're not, it's not coming from your subconscious immediately. In Zen, they say the, 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 a master speaks the truth like a lion from the gut, right? And sometimes it's not tangible words. It's just a scream, right? Sometimes a slap, you know, a pat on the head has more information and is more kind of viscerally communicative than you trying to explain at nauseam what you mean about something, right? Language is limited. Language is, is specific. Uh, in Zen, they say whenever you choose a way to express something, you automatically collapse all of reality into this one line, which can't possibly be true. The second that you verbalize it, it's already not true because the language structure, the philosophy that's in that language structure that created it is already very specific and not accounting for the rest of the spectrum of what reality is. And so we have our bodies and we have music and we have rhythm to get more of that reality to come through. We can say more in a deeper way doing this from the subconscious than if we just write a sentence about it that may be cute, you know? So yeah, it, it uh, understanding these, these the, the, what's the important thing? What am I trying to achieve? It, lays the, it, it starts to lay the roadmap for what you have to do in order to achieve it. If you don't understand where you're going or where you're going doesn't really connect or jive mathematically with where this came from, what this really is, what you're about and how you are supposed to find yourself and your voice through this thing, you end up wasting your, your time going down roads of cabaret and, you know, this is my, look at my salsa, this is my salsa, this is my salsa, as opposed to having it function through you in the way you live where you can have discussions about life 
using the language of salsa as opposed to just showing people the language. This is salsa, this is salsa. Like, l listen to some of the words that I know in French. I know these words and these words and these words and these words. But we're not having a French conversation. You're just, you're just showing me what you know in French. That's what people are doing usually, right? They're not talking about life using the, right, doing things. That's what the music does. The music reminds us of things we've been through, you know. The, the music has, uh, they know, they have the formula, right? You do something in a minor key and it sounds melancholy and it sounds sad. You do something in a major key and it sounds happier, right? And they know how to use that to manipulate the way you feel when you listen to a song. We have no clue what the hell we're doing in that capacity, right? We just know how to, it's like um, whenever you hear salsa music in a commercial, you know? And it's like this real generic, made in a computer, like mm -hmm. interpretation of salsa from way outside of left field. And you're like, oh God, what are they doing? That's what I, tend to see, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the dance world at large. There's just a lot of young people, um, you know, treading water, you know, and violently treading water, but nobody's swimming anywhere. You know, it's like you, uh, James Brown said, um, you know, talking loud and ain't saying nothing, right? There's a lot of talking, but no one's saying anything, you know? And it means that they're not there yet. But because of how they conceive of where they're supposed to be and where they're going, they may never get there because nobody's telling them this is just a phase and you're supposed to learn from this phase and evolve into and go towards this thing. Nobody's there telling them that. Most of the older dancers are trying to look like 20-year-old dancers and you're not giving 20-year-old dancers a look at what a mature dancer is supposed to look like, mm. right? So they don't know where they're going. They think that they're the mm. apex, right? So if he's trying to be like me, he's trying to wear the same clothes I'm wearing. He's, you know, he's trying to squeeze his butt into the same shit that I'm wearing, which I'm half naked. You know, I must be the shit, right? Mm. And it's not like that in martial arts. In martial arts, the old man stays on the seat and knocks you down from the seat. You know what I mean? It's like, and you realize, oh, man, we used to have a joke where we'd say, you know, in 20 years, I'm going to be orange and I'll be just floating in the dojo. You know, like I won't even have to touch the floor. I just float orange because uh, in the old Kung Fu movies, the monks always wore those orange robes and the, the master always had long eyebrows and long. And they, you know, they kind of just like make a sound and people fall down, you know. There's an example of what you're going to end up being like, right? You're going to the, the, mathematically without, you know, this is stuff that is is in science, is the universe, and we just ignore it, right? These lessons have been around for centuries, and we just keep like retreading the same water. If if uh, yesterday I, I, in my class I said subtlety is a virtue of understanding, right? Subtlety is a virtue of understanding. Do we all agree? Yes, everybody always agrees. That means what that means is the more I understand, the more subtle and subtlety will be present. If you keep taking that mathematically, like a physicist, if I keep taking that as far as I can go with it, you end up at zero, right? You end up standing still, right? Because your subtlety keeps growing and keeps growing, keeps growing. Where would that end up if I had the years to take it? I wouldn't have to move. I could stand still and I could express all this shit to you, right? Because the smallest amount of movement should afford me the biggest impact once I understand what I'm supposed to understand, right? I can't be jumping around. You know, it's like tying your shoes. You don't break a sweat tying your shoes. You've done this so long. You, there's no effort that's lost, right? That's why in the old Kung Fu movies, the representation of the master was boom, lift his hand, people fall down, right? I touch you, ooh, and, ah, shit. Because they've achieved subtlety. My body's not going to let me do anything else, right? The truth is there, right? This beautiful, I call it the, 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 the beautiful harmony, right? Where as you develop and you get smarter, you get more subtle, you understand more, you get more subtle, and at the same time, your body is slowly breaking down, right? So that even if you wanted to not be subtle, you can't, right? And so all of a sudden, you're in this old state where you're enfeebled, 
And if your idea of the dance is your 20-year-old version of it, you have no access to it. You, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to, and society is very much governed by 13-year-old kid, right? It's like everything's made for young people. Young people dictate what music we're listening to. I can't believe the stuff I hear in commercials sometimes, and it's young people music, and it's definitely not my music, and it, you know, it makes me nuts. And I remember my parents saying that about us, right? But at least we had examples. We had Yoda and we had Mr. Miyagi and we had, you know, like we had things, themes that presented themselves that let us know that there was somewhere to go when you get older. It's not just that you become obsolete, you know, that, that you can take something to its extent and find its essence there at a time where you have to, if you don't, have its essence you don't have anything because your body just won't let you do it right life is trying to tell you what the answer is you go through the youth part of it because you need that experience it forms a body of a, a part of your understanding about what a maximum effort in a maximum fine-tuned machine means so that now you can slowly start to condense that into smaller and smaller expressions but you need to know kind of what the full expression is that you're trying to represent in this. It's, it's not truncated in the sense that it is, it is less than. It is made into mic a microscopic form, right? With all the information still present. We do that in isolations, right? I move my shoulder real big, real big. And then when I start to move it small, I'm not moving it less. I'm still doing a full, I still have to make sure that a full circle is being expressed but it's the tiniest circle that you can possibly imagine that's happening, right? And so all the information is there, right? It's like, it's like your phone getting smaller and, and computers getting smaller, right? It's still all the information, but in a smaller package. But how beautiful is that, right? If that was what we were showing young people is that as you get older, there's still room for you because you're gonna become more subtle, your body's gonna want to be more subtle and you will arrive at this mastery level where you'll be able, you'll be floating and you'll be orange, right? This industry, you know, is, is, is rough that way. You know, it's it, the, the entertainment, it's entertainment, you know, it's not really art. It's definitely not art. I wish it were, there was more art represented, but it's like, it's entertainment and it's almost entertainment for entertainers. It's not really entertainment for the general public you know, we're just dancing for other dancers and trying to be seen favorably to other dancers who are at all different levels of development, who want all different things from the dance, and their judgment of you really has no bearing because they don't understand what you're looking for, right? Somebody says, you know, oh, but, but this person doesn't do this or that. Yeah, but they not, may not be trying... To, to seek that. They may be seeking something completely different that you're not even aware of. And because you're not aware of it, you don't see how much they are presenting that. Right. Because you're, it's like somebody that you love who expects you to show them love in a specific way and you're mm -hmm. showing them love in a different way at max level, but they're missing it because they're looking for it the way they want, they think they're supposed to receive it. And so it, it doesn't work. I don't believe in competitions. I, it, I'm, that's like having a painting competition. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, how do I judge you on being you, on manifesting you rhythmically? We can talk about, you know, your, your, the level of sophistication in being able to do that. But everybody understands what they understand. What are you going to understand more today than you understood? You know, it's like, I can tell what you understand in two or three movements. And if you're not at that level of understanding, why am I putting you, pitting you against somebody else who may be at a different level of understanding? You manifest what you understand, right? If you make a mistake, it's because people at your level make that mistake. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. That's exactly a perfect mistake for you to make because that's the type of mistake you make. That's the Zen concept of perfection, right? Look, everything, there is no idea of perfection the way we conceive of it. Perfection is exists in everything you know a broken mirror is exactly what it's supposed to be you know a flawed person is exactly what it, you wouldn't be a human being if you weren't you know 
uh, if you're all knowing and and you're and you're you know squeaky clean human beings smell bad they do stupid shit because our brains can't possibly deal with everything that there's that's being human that's not being imperfect that's a perfect human you would be something else if you were you know what we think of perfection and so everybody just manifests what they understand in every moment a master of an art reveals it in their every movement right it, it's that's what you mean by dance as life it means that it it's it's in everything you do now you're no longer separate from it right it's not something i know it's something i am i walk down the street with it i don't have to go to the studio to put on a special pair of shoes to do it i'm doing it right now talking to you i'm doing it when i'm in the bathroom i'm doing it when i'm brushing my teeth it doesn't go anywhere right that's the real dance the stuff you you organize that's you know a, a way of me trying to represent things put my thoughts together so that maybe you will recognize something i'm trying to express that's why i love the jazz concept and i'm very much a jazzist because that's that African drum concept, right? Is being in the trance, working on manifesting in a moment in an improvised setting from your subconscious without conscious thought, something beautiful about life, right? Right there in the moment that anybody can recognize and go, oh, I, I know that feeling, you know? That is pure walking, talking music. That's what I wanna be. I wanna be at every moment what music is referring to, right? The thing music is referring to, we all carry, you know, there's nothing to express. The music is already an expression. I'm not gonna express the music with my dancing because now I'm expressing the expression of a thing. The thing is the thing, I'm walking around with it. Once you get that, all these layers of, of separation, they go away, right? It's, we're trying to blend the, the trifecta, the, the, the trinity, the, the music, the dance, and the dancer, you're trying to get rid of those lines where you can't distinguish those things anymore, you know? That person is walking, talking music, you know? Or, or walking, talking dance. You know, the, the, the human manifestation of what music is alluding to, you know? Because that's what it's about. The, the music didn't come from another planet, you know? They're, it's expressing human, the human condition. You know, we just missed the point. And, and that's why a teacher is a good thing. You know, a, a, a competent teacher helps you kind of see the point. And you have to go through the phases. You got to go through. Everybody's got to go through puberty. You got to go through it. But a good, competent teacher will help you navigate that and let you know that you are never in a state that's static. You're always in flux. There's only going and you will eventually move out of this state into another state and don't hold on to it. You're not supposed to stay in puberty the rest of your life, right? You gotta get ready for the, the, the transcending of stages because that's what development is all about as human beings, you know? We're not the same person, you know, you see a, a video of you at 20 years old, you're not that person anymore. You're not the same person you were before we did this interview. But we're different now because of this experience. Our wiring is different, you know? Your cells regenerate every three days, they're gone. So whatever you think is you, it's, it's replenished all the time. There's nothing to hold on to, you know? You're always changing, you're always evolving. People say they want to express themselves or they have something to say. You don't know what you're trying to say half the time. You have no clue what you're all about. You can see that in relationships, you know? What do you want? I don't know, I don't know what I want. You don't really know what you want. You don't know who you are, what you're trying to say. You just know how you feel and what you want to whine about at the moment. But to really explore yourself, uh, there, there's a saying that there's no, there's no study worth studying that isn't a study of the self, right? So there's no endeavor worth getting into that isn't ultimately a study of you, like of the self, like, what you're about, revealing things about you. If you take dance practice to its potential, it shows you so much about you as an individual, about who you are, who you were, who you're becoming, what you are saying today, how you feel about things today that's different from yesterday. You know, it's like the, the, 
the information is there to be gleaned, to, to observe, to manifest in a moment, to be in tune with, right? To, to, as a musician, who am I today? How's this song kind of come out today? It can't be yesterday's song. I'm a different person. So what's today's song, right? What's today's dance look like? It's not going to look like that tomorrow, right? I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I'm not thinking about those. those that's fantasy. Today's dance is, uh, they call it uh, practice enlightenment. And, and every time in Zen and the Soto sect, they believe that if you are practicing, if you sit to meditate, you're that close. You're like the, the width of a piece of paper from mastery, from enlightenment. Because you're engaged in the activity, you manifest its culmination is there. It's like a shadow that's right there. You're very close to it. And so every time you're in the trance, you're there. Mastery is there for you. You know, you're right there every time you practice. How deeply that manifests will change as you understand things. But you're always touching that. You're, you're, you're tapping the door of mastery is always right there with you. you know? Do you think, at this current time, do you believe you achieve mastery in dancing? I, I, I can't concern myself with that in that capacity. In, in, in every, every stage of understanding the, the, the monumental vision of what is possible is overwhelming, you know, and it makes me feel tiny. You know, I feel like I, when I'm in a trance, I feel like I'm there. I'm, t I'm, I'm, I'm in it, you know. When I'm having a conversation, I, I don't know where I am, you know. I don't know what, what, there's so much to understand, right. I, I, I try to define mastery for myself and I, I try to live more of my life in that capacity. But I'm definitely not living my entire life in that capacity. There's, there, there, I just have easier access to it than, than others. And again, th there's no point in me sitting there and worrying about it because there's, there's the next step, you know. And there's the next understanding. There's the next level. There's the next shore or the next mountain, you know. Once you get to the mountaintop, you realize, oh my God, there's other mountains out there. That you know, it's like. You, Every move you make, you realize there's more moves to make. It's almost like you're getting further away from something the more you run towards it. And you start to realize it's not the thing you're running towards. It's the running itself that is the mastery, you know? The fact that I'm engaged and I continue to be engaged is the process of mastery itself, you know? So it's, it's really, you don't think it's the outcome. It's not something that you actually can do yourself. It's, it's, the, it's the process somehow that is defined, you define it as mastery. It's, it's, the, it's the counterintuitiveness that reality always presents us, right? It always, it always hits us in the face, right? What we think intuitively about reality is always kicks us in the, in the nuts, right? It's always, it always lets us know we were wrong. It's always kind of like this strange way of thinking about things that is reverse of how you would have mathematically put it together. Let me tell you something. It, it, like physics, like Einstein and relativity and physics turning into quantum physics and how much Einstein did and how monumental th those things were and how averse he was to quantum physics and the concept of quantum physics and how much it didn't jive with him and his sense of, of religious reality being divinely, mathematically, beautifully organized. Because quantum physics is messy and it's counterintuitive and it doesn't make sense the way our brain has learned to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. And so... It's always like that. It's always like that. In Zen, they say that in order to achieve a certain goal, you have to become a certain type of person. When you become the person that's capable of achieving that goal, you realize how stupid the goal was in the first place, right? 
it's this paradox always where you need the you need the fire that trying to achieve something provides in order to become the person that doesn't that realizes that that's a stupid thing to try to achieve in the first place and that's what we mean by practice enlightenment or or practice mastery is that the it's that there's nowhere to get it's the movement right there's nothing you you don't see that in any reflection in nature that something stays static everything is in a state of decay everything's right. moving everything is going possibly in both directions right mathematically right. time is moving in both directions the dimensions are more than we can experience right everything is in flux nothing is static that's what they mean by non-attachment in buddhism because what are you holding on to everything is everything is flowing constantly and so movement is what we manifest recognizing that is understanding and moving is mastery right that that that's the simplest poetic way to to put it you know there's nothing to get there's nowhere to get to there's only going and as long as you're involved in going then mastery goes with you it's there it's with you right you're being true to the flow you're not countering the flow i always tell dancers to get out of the way get out of the way you're interfering with the whole thing right you need to eliminate the i from the equation so that the mambo can exist let the thing happen stop trying to control it so much stop trying to make it something specific you think it's supposed to be in order for people to accept you when you do it and let the damn mambo be what it's supposed to be you know it's so hard to do that it's so hard to do that therapists get paid thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to get people to try and figure that out you know it's tough because we live in a world linguistically culturally we live in a world of i exist separate from everything else i'm over here i want to be seen i want to stand out i want to be accepted we have all these counter narratives that are operating in our psyche constantly and it's very difficult for us to understand how to be part of the flow and not try to make the flow something we think it's supposed to be because the flow is the flow with or without you you're here you don't remember anything before you were here because you were somewhere else and when you go away you will go back to that somewhere else and you will have no consciousness of what you know it, it with or without you things keep moving you know and so you you worrying we worry about where we are because we're thinking small you know we compare ourselves to others we find value in the way we're accepted from others but in the grand scheme of things it's the silliest thing to spend your mental energy on is to worry about where you are in a process what you've achieved i don't believe in the whole goal setting thing i don't believe in any of that stuff zen and the the philosophies that have been around for centuries that hundreds of of you know influential people throughout time have borrowed from has taught us a lot of different things people are worried about productivity and they're worried about making money and they're worried about all the things that have nothing to do with fulfillment in your life and so people follow the rules that get them to these things they think are going to make them happy because that's the way culture is right now but we've learned we've heard of it gandhi was talking about it you know it's like we we don't we hear these lessons and they sound cute in a post in a in a in a gif you know it's like we somebody writes something on their instagram and we think that they're all wise and all knowing and it's just something that kind of sounds cute most of these sayings are like not very, very well thought out anyway they just really sound cute people trying to live their lives according to these things without any deeper understanding of what the reality I, I had somebody send me and I, I, I hesitate to say this because they're gonna know exactly who they are but I I had somebody send me an Indian guru who somebody was interviewing and they asked him what about trauma what do you think about trauma and, and he said trauma is a choice that you can take a harmful experience and you can choose to either be traumatized from it or you can choose to learn from it and become stronger that is the most dangerous thing i've ever heard somebody say right and it sounds so uplifting right because it gives you control and giving people control makes them feel less uh hopeless but you can't tell 
a child who's sexually abused that they have a choice whether or not to be traumatized. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? It sounds so good. It sounds like a nice little clip to send to people. But if you sit with that for a second and you just think about it for a half second more, you realize that that's really a bad thing to be saying on its own out of context, right? And there's so much like that. There's so much like that. And because we, we don't like to think, we like to know, you know, like we don't like to see the, the process of things is, is, is almost unbearable to most people, especially now because everything is so instant. And so we, we, we don't think enough and yet we think too much. You know, we think ourselves in, in, in knots and we, we come up with things, golden rules that help you further your confusion in trying to live a fulfilling life. And like I said, my dogs have the answer. Like, they have the answer. They don't need anybody's post to live the way they're supposed to live. They get it. We get it too. We're just thinking ourselves into, into knots with this stuff. You know, it's like pop culture, you know, advertising. There's so much shit being thrown at you constantly that it's really hard for you to think for yourself. You know, that's why we have this... this uh, this contradiction and this this uh, this fight between cause and effect and um, and freedom of choice, you know, it's like the there's that fight. Is does does freedom of choice really exist if you are being manipulated so deeply by so much, and the way your brain learns how to deal with information that way is to take these experiences and store them and create fears and create uh, through lines of thinking that may have nothing to do with reality. It's just that your experience has, you know, your brain has taken your experiences and codified them in a certain way that makes you have a gut feeling about something. Somebody said once, uh, intuition may be the worst thing you can follow, right? Because your intuition is tied to something. And if your intuition is tied to something that is even a little bit different than what you're actually experiencing, you're off. Your gut's telling you the wrong thing, right? And so, you know, the, the, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to what are you actually trying to achieve? And, and you can liken it, you know, in a relative way to technique in the dance and living your life, right? The universal way is living your life and how life works. And the, the, the relative is like this step functions this way because of the same principles as what's happening here, you know? And so I, I always talk about both those things and I point to them whenever I talk about something in a step, I talk about it in life too. I say, it's the same thing that happens in life when this happens, right? And that's what we're doing is we're studying life and ourselves, not the, the freaking dance is worthless if we don't learn how to deal with what we have to deal with, you know? And it's so good at being able to do that if we just used it that way, you know, fame and attention and all this stuff. Good God, you know, even if you achieve it, I, I, there was a time where I was the most solicited dancer on the planet. That time came and went. I can't cry about the fact that I'm not that thing anymore. Like those things happen and they go away and turn into something else. And then that thing goes away and turns into something else. You can't hold on to this stuff. Nobody's talking about Madonna right now. Who's talking about Madonna right now? In 1987, all anybody could talk about was Madonna. She's not any less valuable because other people are on people's lips. She did what she did. We all loved her. She's somewhere getting plastic surgery. You know, she looks crazy now, but, she, you know, she's somewhere, but nobody's talking about her. You know, she, some people, that makes them nuts. You know, be careful what you wish for because you, you get that and you lose that. And it's like, how many movies have been made about... Uh, stars that are on the down slope that you know there's a yeah. bunch of movies like that there and it seems you know if your goal is fame or if you're trying to hold on to fame like if that is the priority good it's luck a losing path good luck man you know? good luck um, good luck not being horribly s scarred and demented ultimately from that endeavor yeah. you know because y you all the depression that's wrapped up in that, all the all the feelings of failure and the feelings of time goes so fast and I didn't achieve this and I didn't achieve that and good God, like the expectations are, are 
impractical and unfair and have nothing to do with, you know, like just being a good person. Nobody endeavors to be a good person. Like just be a good person. Like what, what, why do you have to be the best person that ever lived? You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> why can't you just learn how to have compassion for, you know, so we can stop fighting all the time and like learn to overcome that because our genes are telling us something I think you hit on part of it. Yeah. I think the, the influences that we have today and, you know, before, back in the even 90s or 80s, you know, when we grew up with no internet, I grew up in the Soviet Union. Wow. I'm from a different country. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I haven't even, we yes. haven't talked about that. All right. That's a, that's like a whole day yes. conversation, that's right? That's another, another yeah. day, right, but, for sure. But my point is, I, I never had internet. Yeah. I never had influences outside of my household. Right. And my household was very humble. You know, very loving, supportive environment. Wow. So for me, you know, it's not to say I'm still full prey to yes. social media. And obviously I'm going through my own transitions with that, right? But kids today, I can't even imagine uh. because they all have phones. And the only thing you need to do is open any website, any social media platform. And then you see everybody's pretty, everybody's successful, yes. everybody reach. Yes, and then yes, what yes. does it do to a young mind? You know? it's, it's so, I mean, it's everything that we were fighting against when the when the whole thing with the models and the, 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 the image that models portrayed to young women about what it meant to be beautiful, how, how, how uh, they started realizing how damaging that was. And we took that and, and instead of learning from it and, and trying to change the way we, you know, we represent beauty and the ideas of beauty, we go to the like, you know, completely to another dimension in social media of doing that very same thing. It's funny because I, I, I'm, a, I'm not a believer in talent in the sense of like, I don't believe that talent has more value than anything else, right? I, I find that our feti fetishization of talent is silly, right? It's... it's um, it doesn't make sense in 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 the larger scheme of things, right? In in other words, it's funny that we are inspired by anomalies that give us insight into the possibility of the human condition that we will never have access to. You know what I'm saying? And and it's inspiring. That's great. It's wonderful to see somebody who, through no fault of their own was lucky enough to be born in a time with an affinity that was valued by the culture of that time by genetic lottery, right? Mm -hmm. It's like being, being conceited about being good looking, but you didn't, you didn't, do anything you did not to, earn it you it just happened you, yeah. you're lucky you know you have a mole on on your lip you have a mole on your lip you didn't you didn't you know like wh what are you proud of you know right. why would you ever put somebody else down because they don't share attributes you think of they didn't have a say in that you know what i'm saying they things happen because they happen right you are gifted because you're gifted and you're gifted because we value what you, you, you what you do could be absolutely atrocious in a different culture in a different time. A, a woman could be the most beautiful person you've ever seen. You put her in Papua New Guinea and they think she's hideous, right? It's all relative and it's all a bunch of junk. The, the thing is, I always talk about how difficult it is when you keep feeding people that you think are gifted that they're gifted, especially when they're young. It's poison. It's, it fucks them up. And they, they become a mess, right? And you see it all over the place, right? You see it all over the place where people are entitled to a degree that they think they deserve stuff because of what people have told them their whole life that they're special. And they deserve to take advantage of people sexually. And they deserve to... to, to you know, to have all the love that they didn't have as a child. And, it, you know, they're going to find it through drugs. And, you know, these people are just as jacked up as you are, right? It doesn't matter that they can dance or moonwalk. It doesn't matter. They're still addicted to whatever they're addicted to. And they still got problems. 
that you know that the 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 worst of us have, right? Because the worst of us. Um, and what what did that moonwalking get you? You know, you're accused of this. You 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 died of this. You know, you never really figured life out. You never really were able to right. It's that's a lonely place to be, man. It's a lonely place to be, and it's a place of of great sorrow because you're so focused on living up to what these people think you're supposed to be for them because they can't be. They're living vicariously through this thing that you express for them. They're not spending the time on themselves. They're worried about you. You're not spending time on yourself because you're worried about them. And it's this spiral of, of strangeness that could only exist, you know, in a society that, and we're, 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 we're wired that way. I get where it comes from. But we never question these things. If you just question these things, why, why do you want something? Why do you think the thing you want is going to make you happy? Do, do we ever question that? We never do. We only worry about what we want, right? I want that. I'm going to go get it. You never think, does it make sense to go for that? Why do I think it's going to make me happy? You just know that you want it. We never question where the want is coming from. That's a good question to ask. You know, where is this coming from? Why do I want to be famous? What the hell do you want to be famous for? Why do you want to be acknowledged as being that you, you because it gives you access to stuff that other people don't have access to? Because that seems to be what ends up happening, especially with men. You have access to stuff other, you have sexual opportunities, you have, uh, you know, access to, to, the, the wrong sexual opportunities because you are a certain individual. Is that what's happening? Do you think that adoration of a lot of people is going to fulfill you and make you a better person, make your life? I did a whole two-hour master class, might have been an hour, lecture about why do you want to be a good dancer in Turkey in 2013 or something. We just sat there and talked about what, why do you think you want to be a good dancer? What the hell do you think that's going to bring you? Why, yeah. why, do we, why do we chase this so much, you know? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great yeah. question to ask. What do you think that even great is, question. right? What, what, what do you, when do you, where's the line you cross to being good or great? Where does that, you know, like, just thinking about it as an exercise, like a thought experiment. It is, know? very much so. Yeah. I feel like I went through it as yeah. well. You know? Yeah, we all go. I mean, l listen. I'm I'm no less human than anybody else, right? I, I, it's just the sitting down, maturing, considering things, contemplation, right? Meditation, years of meditation. You start to feel silly about certain things, you know, that you have a propensity for, you know. And I know I have a propensity for, and I make fun of myself for having that propensity. But I'm human, right? And so feeling a little silly about it and observing it and being aware of it starts to make you less beholden to it. You become less a slave to it because you're aware it's, act, it's acting on you and you know where it's coming from, you know? I know where it's coming from. I have this thing that I want to be like and so I'm, I'm acting silly because that's, you know, they, they have this exercise in Zen where they say whenever you feel something, if you get angry, whatever you feel, stop for a second and figure out where you're feeling it. In your body right mm -hmm. and kind of attach to that and start to kind of record what are you doing how are you acting what physical quirks are happening like like you're doing an experiment like you're doing um you're you're uh analyzing data right mm -hmm. because uh they act they ask you to do this in acting exercises right if you get angry to to uh, shit, you know, make an account of how you acted and what you were, where it started, how it built up and what you were doing, what were the activities, what were the things that you did as it escalated. And it gives you information to draw on when you're in an acting class. But it reveals your propensities, you know, and you start to think about why do I do that? You know, it's like it's like therapists asking you to relive things and to take details and, and sit with details, sit with feelings, or what does it feel like? Where is it? Is it in my stomach? Is it higher in my chest? Can I breathe? Is my breathing speeding up? Is my heart rate speeding up? You know, like you, you start to realize, uh, you know, 
this, this is what I do in these circumstances, you know, and it makes you, that awareness starts to calm those things down on its own. You don't have to try to live a different way. That never works. But just taking an account, just being aware, it's a, a very powerful exercise that I read in a book called Everyday Zen that the, the, the teacher recommended in part of their lecture. And it, it's so, so valuable. I use it for performance projects. I use it for when I'm talking to friends. You know, because we, we, we all think you have to try to act different. You act the way you act because of how you're thinking about things. You can't just act different. That's not going to change the way you think about it. You're, you're, the, the way you act is a, is a symptom. It's not the thing. We love to deal with symptoms, let me tell you. We love to mess with symptoms. That, it, that, that's the, the ground level issue, is that we do not realize that the things we don't desire are not the problem. They're usually a result of the problem. And that in order to stop that thing, again, counterintuition, right? It's counterintuitive. To try to stop that thing may not, the best way may not be to force yourself to act a different way. It's like trying to tell a teenager, you must not do this. The first thing they want to do is go do it, right? Yeah, right, right. It's like the, the, the that's a symptom of something. You got you to put them in a position where they don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do that because I fixed the problem, not the symptom of the problem. I went to the doctor with a with an issue, and all they wanted to do was like give me pills to take away the symptoms. So I could, you know, I'm like, I don't care about the symptoms. I'm okay with the symptoms. I want to figure out the hell's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, but we love that. We do that in dance. We do that in life. Um, and a lot of times, uh, we're just unaware. And and awareness, uh, the 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 biggest, most powerful thing I ever read was in a Zen ad- anecdote where. A monk said, if you can sum up life, you know, and like Zen, you know, in one sentence, what would you say? And he said, attention. And, and, and the guy said, well, what if you wanted to get a little deeper and you wanted to? And he said, attention, attention, attention. And he said, okay, but what if I were a student and I was, and he said, attention, attention, attention. <laughs> it's like, hello, right? Attention, being aware, being mindful observe it's fun you know it's fun it's fun looking at yourself and, and like oh shit look what i'm doing like i'm being i'm being manipulative like i'm being manipulative i'm being selfish i'm being i'm doing this because it makes me feel good and not really doing it because i'm trying to help this person i'm doing it because i feel valuable helping them right it's the feeling i'm getting that's actually the thing it's not the helping itself right because otherwise you'd help somebody if it if it felt bad right, right. And so how many of us are willing to do that? How many of us are willing to dance if it feels bad, right? Because life feels bad sometimes, and that should be included also, right? It, it's, uh, it's one big thought experiment. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people treat dance as outlet, which feels good. Yeah. Which understood, I think, yeah, you know, yeah. because life is hard as mm-hmm. is, you know, by default. But dance gives you that outlet that just, yeah. Allows you to forget about it and connect with people and smile and it's feel escapism, happy, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, no, I love the philosophy, and you definitely touched on a lot of different things that go beyond just dancing. Obviously, <laughs> absolutely, right? it's yeah. philosophical. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about one technical component of dancing that changed your game. Yeah. Do you think you can point to one or two things that once you've mastered, or once maybe maybe master isn't the right <laughs> word anymore, yeah. but once you've really gotten a proficient at it, that really changed the dancing game for you? Uh, I, you know, I have to say it was it's the isolations. Like I, we always say that it's the it's the our fundamental practice. You know, and there's a good reason for that. And in, in karate, you, the kata is the fundamental practice. You know, in Zen, it's the sitting. The fundamental practice, the thing you do that encompasses all the reality of everything you're trying to achieve, and it's all kind of, you know, that that's what you do. Everything else is kind of a supplement to that thing. And the way that we do that isolation practice is, is a very universal, very layered way of developing being connected rhythmically and having the faculty corporally pardon me, to, in an ever-evolving way, 
to be more specific about how you express things with your body, you know? And by practicing that and making it a, a very regular practice, a, you know, twice a week, once a week practice that you don't uh, skip has, I think, um, developed me in a way that I could have never, ever imagined when I was young and I thought about what I would end up becoming as I evolved in the dance. You know, I, I think that it, it and, and I talk to my students about the fact that they're usually, they're usually the worst judges of what they need in the dance and where they're supposed to end up because you just don't have the sight yet. You know, like you have to go through this process and live with it for a while to develop the sight to see what will benefit you and what you really actually are going to look like, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you have examples around you and you, you're like, oh, I want to look like this person. And they serve as like these stepping stones to you striving. But when you arrive, you are nothing like that, you know? And, and you realize, beautiful. and it's beautiful. And it's supposed to be. Right. And it can't be any other way. And the more you fight against that, the harder you make your something that's already difficult, you're making much harder because you're trying to encompass somebody else's expression, you know, somebody else's voice. We're all different. We're all wired differently from different uh, experiences. There's no way for you to end up like anybody else. The attempt to imitate and to conform to what is acceptable in a given moment in time, in a given region, in a given endeavor, is ultimately fruitless in its, uh, in its ability to develop you truly to what you're supposed to become, you know? I always say that you learn, you learn rumba so you understand what it feels like. You learn pachanga so you understand what it feels like. Once you understand what it feels like, you don't have to, you can, you can rumba down the street, right? You can pachanga in your sleep. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for you to do a specific movement in a specific way for right. you to embody that feeling. It has right? to become part of you yeah. so it can come out right. at the right moment. Exactly. In the, in the right way because you get what the you get what the step was implying to you. The step is never the thing. The turns are not the dance. The steps are not the dance. The steps are pregnant with information that they're trying to deliver to you. If you fall in love with the step, you're falling in love with the packaging that the, that the prize comes right. in, right? right? And you're missing the point that there's a prize inside. There's something inside that's of true right. value and Correct. you're worried about the, the packaging, right? And, and, and Cubans do this to a fault, right? Because, they, because you must in Afro-Cuban dances, you must because you're saying something. It's religious. It's, it's, it's uh, linguistic in the way that it's done, right? It's like sign language. Yeah. If my finger is in the wrong position, I'm cursing you out. Right. As opposed to saying I love you because I put my finger in the wrong place, right? It's not universally linguistic in the sense, it's not beyond language. It's not poetry, right? right? Poetry, be, be, uh, it belies the structure of language. Poetry is right. the only thing that's not um, governed by the grammatical structures in a language, right? And because poetry's job is to make fun of language. Zen's job it, with, with these riddles that they give you to meditate on is to make fun of language's uh, limitations, right? Language can only take you so far. You, and so they use language to subvert language, right? Language is not the answer, right? And so the, the feeling, the feeling, right? The, the, the essence of the thing that it's trying to transmit the, the musical information that musical notes are carrying, right? right. Even a sound, a, a, a sequence of sound, it's not the sound, it's the information that it carries, you know? And I can carry that information in different ways depending on Correct. what the moment is, right? So, so I completely get it as yeah. far as that part of it because it makes 100% sense that yes. moves. <laughs> yeah. 
I think, right. you can correct me if I'm wrong, because yes. I'm going to tell you what I think you meant, yes. and then I, I'm going to present a, a problem yes. that I think exists. With Certainly, that. yeah. It makes complete sense that moves that you learn not supposed to be used in a box. They're supposed to be becoming part of you, and then you manifest those moves on the dance floor as an expression of yourself through the music, and it becoming a beautiful thing. But commercially, it represents a problem because if I'm an owner of the studio and people come to me, people typically learn moves. They, they learn patterns. They learn techniques. And so I'm going to guess here that I would have a hard time selling the feeling or you know, ability for someone to learn the move just to be able to use it later at the proper time. Mm. So what do you think the solution here with that conundrum? It's not. It's never. It's not really a problem. the 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 reason the 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 studio sh system is working just fine. the The problem is that nobody's telling them. Nobody's alluding to what the, the. I'm not telling you the the method behind the madness. I'm just giving you the steps, and I'm telling you that the sequence of steps is the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? And so you go along thinking that you have to reproduce the things that I showed you in class in a specific order to make it look cool. You gotta put your hand here to make it look cool. You have to make this face to make it look cool, right? And I never let you know that, you know, you gotta get this stuff down packed, but all this stuff you're, is eventually meant for you to forget about and to release, right? You don't hit them with that the day they walk into the studio, you're gonna lose everybody, right? Everybody's there for whatever reason they think they're there for. Nobody ever comes to a studio for the same reasons they stay training in the dance, right? That your reasons change as you as you evolve. I'm not even thinking about the twenty year old that with my father and the thing and why I wanna need it to get in that that shit is long gone. All the martial arts training and all the Zen training and all the dance training has now morphed into this one thing that I've been doing since I've been nine years old, since I've been alert enough to work on myself, right? But it took me a long time. If, if I would have gone into a studio and somebody would have said, this is going to be like martial arts, I would have said, eee, I might have, they might have pushed me away. And so you, you deal with them, right? People go to church for a specific reason. You go to, you know, the, you're looking for something specific. If you come to church, you sit down and I start doing aerobics. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm here to try to figure my life out. Right. Same thing if somebody comes into a dance studio and I start giving them philosophy. Wait a minute, I'm here to jump around, right? I get that, and so we jump around. We're going to jump around. And then slowly, I start letting you know, don't fall in love with this this way. I'm, I, I never use patterns. Patterns are never the point. I use patterns as an excuse to talk about concepts. you got to learn the pattern, but in the meantime, I'm giving you these concepts. This operates this way. You don't have to learn it that moment. You're worried about the, the pattern. After a while, you keep hearing these concepts over and over, and they keep manifesting in different ways in different patterns. This is the same thing as this other pattern. Remember when we did this? It's the same thing. The concept here is another version of me trying to accomplish this concept. That's always the more valuable information. It's never the goddamn manifestation, right? It's never the thing. I, don't, I show you a punch. This is how punch is supposed to be delivered. But if a guy is, choke, is, a, is choking you, you throw a punch however the hell you need to throw a punch. And you learn how to throw punches in any different way you can and generate power in any different way you can because, and a punch may not be the appropriate thing in that moment, right? So, but we got to learn the punch. Bruce right. Lee always said it. He said it. He, he, Bruce Lee said, and this is a Zen quote, by the way, that he manipulated to become a Kung Fu thing. He said, before you understand a punch is just a punch, right? Then you start to study and you're tr spending years trying to perfect this thing and it becomes this huge, massive thing that you can't perfect. Once you understand, the punch is just a punch again, right? You come back full circle to the beginning where you know exactly what a punch is. You've tried all different kinds of punches. You know how to generate power and you just punch. You just punch. You don't think about how it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like. What it... You don't hit somebody with that at the beginning. You teach them how to punch. You teach them how to get hit, how to hit, how to feel contact, how to make contact. Slowly you start to, you pepper them with the, the whys and the be carefuls and the, 
you know, by the way, this is not forever. This is just for now. This is the version I need to give you for this moment in your understanding. And I'll give you a slightly different version. I did the deluxe version yesterday in the class, and the, mm -hmm. there's the normal version. And if you feeling fruity or you develop it and you start to get comfortable, you can try this version to just step up. And guess what? There's another version and another version. And <laughs> so which one are you doing? Are it's you a doing rabbit the, hole. Right? the one or the, you know, it's, it, it, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's, uh, I can, I can dance the whole night and never do anything that you would recognize as a step that we ever practiced. Right. You know, it, it, it's, it's not the point. It's not the point. Sometimes I'll, I'll do a step and I'm like, why the hell did I just do that? <laughs> it's like, why would I do that? I feel embarrassed. I'm like, I hope nobody saw that. You know, like I actually did a step that we normally do that anybody could say, hey, that's that so-and-so step. You know, come on. I wasn't in it for that moment. I, I woke up for a second and I, I thought about it and, and this step came out, you know. Um, that's me being me, being the jazz musician and, and being hard on myself and wanting and understanding what I'm trying to achieve, you know. I'm, and and um, but again, you you you. Everybody is where they are, and their level of understanding requires a specific approach to how they get their information. You just they just need to know they're not going to stay there. You know, that's all they. That's all you have to do is just plant the seeds so that when they do wake up, th they're they wake up with with a blueprint that you've left behind like breadcrumbs for them to start asking the questions now. And once they start asking the questions, you got them, and now you start to like, you really want to go down this road, then you gotta, this is gonna have to start to move from your rib cage down to your knees, to your ankles, to the, to the, the way your feet are going into the, you can't just have this cute thing up here that's not connected, we gotta connect it all now. And so, you know, it, it becomes a thing that you now through almost uh, being addicted, you, you, you start looking for it. Right, you start to become hungry, and when that hunger starts to set in, that's when you start to hit them with the, the heavier stuff. You know, it's it's obviously going to be. I know that I represent to some people who come across me in these events as an anomaly. That's just uh, I'm not I'm not even going to think about trying to go there. I had a woman yesterday tell me, you know, they, they finished a workshop and they said hello to me and she I know her for years and she was like I'm not going to take your class because I'm you know I, I can't do all the thing and the thing and I I can fake it but once I have to do the thing I was like wow so you're not going to take the class it's like a, a, a girl that told me uh I don't meditate because I, I have a hard time concentrating and I, was, <laughs> I said that that's why you meditate to learn how to concentrate we're, we're, like you're not supposed to know how to concentrate well, that's like saying I'm not going to work out because I'm not in shape you know it's like what are you talking about <laughs> But uh, but I think people just they bl they blow it off because because it takes decades to get there. I'm not asking you to get to be there. That so other teachers do that. They ask you to be there. I'm going to show it to you, and I want you to do it like I'm doing it. I never ever ever will ask anybody to do that. Is that nobody's going to? They don't have the the level of understanding and the level of trans transcending of the stuff that I went through to acquire. Mm these things right mm. we have to give you the baby steps and you're going to do the, the the baby steps your version of it is the version that we're going to deal with right now right this is where we end up we want to end up going if your hip is in the wrong place it'll be in the wrong place for a while until you get this other thing down packed and then this will start to make sense in a different way but i can't give you all of that in an hour i, I gotta you know we're, we're just gonna work on what you can work on and uh the the again getting the pattern isn't what i'm delivering i'm planting seeds you know i'm changing people's perception you're not going to be able to do the step you don't train the way we train you don't understand weight shifting the way we understand weight shifting you're you're not you're you're not focused that way how do i i can't present you with information like that the rest of the scene can because everything is this formulaic mess that everybody's kind of like is homogenous and everybody can do it the stuff we do doesn't work that way. You can't just walk into just because you're a, a, a you're a bachata dancer, you're gonna go to an advanced flamenco class. You can't do that. You gotta start that shit from mm -hmm. the beginning. You gotta do the them, learn how to hit the ground with your heel and change your heel to your foot. You have to develop that. It's in, in the Cubans say that skill you can't force skill. You have to skill happens on its own. Totally. You have to do the 
exercises. And it takes time to go through this shit. It's like uh, Giovanni Hidalgo is this prodigious drummer, right? And he's got, I, I got one of his teaching videos once. And this dude was not speaking my language. He, he was like, okay, you're going to do this. And you can do this. And you can also do this. And I'm like, bro. It's like he couldn't conceive of life outside of his, his proficiency. He's just so good that he expects that you should be able to just like do these. God damn. Um, you know, I'm, that's, I, I can't possibly, you know, what would what I'm teaching be worth if you could do it right now today without having done any of the work that I've done? What, what the hell exactly am I doing? That's another question for people to ask themselves, right? It, it's, and again, I'm not asking you to. Correct. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm making you go through the pain of this process to plant seeds of to, uh, concepts. Right. This is also possible, right? But you have to have an understanding of your, you know, where weight is in your foot, not just in your body, but in you, where weight is being... In the isolations, you see me messing around. If your if your awareness makes its way to my feet, I'm messing around with my feet. You can see my shoes wear in a very specific way because of how I'm gripping the ground when I'm doing isolations. All my shoes end up with this curve to the inside, right where it flattens out on the outside because of karate. I, I learned to grip the ground with my feet on the outside to stabilize. So if I'm moving my hips, I'm stabilizing my feet where they are. And I can't help but from all this shifting back and forth to wear out my shoes in a certain way. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm messing with where my weight is on my feet. I feel that, you know, it, it informs me and I can use it rhythmically to mess around and to do things. Those are things you develop. You can't, I can't give that to you. You have to do the exercise. You know, you have to work the rudiments until you develop it and you'll develop it in different stages as you go along. It's like playing the violin, you know, eight hours a day. Five days a week, that's what these kids do. You're not doing anywhere near that. Why would you expect to be able to do what I'm asking you to do? You know? But this world does that. It sells that. And that's the, that's the commercial aspect of it. It's entertainment. It's not education. It's not dance training. Can't, we can't do it. The, the, the format doesn't allow for that. Um, and that's okay. Because I, I can still be functional in opening people's eyes a little bit. So they can see a little more. They can understand what is valuable, what is um, a gimmick that somebody's using in order to get your money. You know. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. And 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 you know, anything that's successful uh, in allowing people to make a living off of this, there's always going to be an element of that involved. But maybe I can make you a little wiser. Maybe you won't spend your money in the same places that everybody else is spending their money because they're being, you know, they're being manipulated by the commercials. And the, that's what I call the shows now. I call them commercials. You know, it's like this is what you could do if you come to my workshop. You know, you you, you can do this. This that's the way of selling themselves. It's not like an expression of art or, uh, uh, you know, a uh, a moment to say something or or to experience something with. A group of people in an environment to put them through something and go through it with them it's specific you know these kids are they're selling themselves and they, they should i mean it, it it uh they're trying to live their dream which is to make a living being a dancer and i wish them the best of luck because it is it is probably the most impractical way to make a living you know that has existed you know it's like uh you know, you're not making enough money fast enough for it to last you when the stuff starts breaking down, you know. If you were a model, you might be able to make enough money, you know, so that right. when you get older and nobody wants to photograph you anymore, you made so much money that you're okay, you know. Madonna's okay. She's okay. She's fine, right. Um, that's if the making a living is your goal. We, we're we not making that much money, you know. Sade made two albums or Two albums, I think. She had the wherewithal to get the rights to her music when she did that. And that woman is set. She never has to sing another song. And she hasn't had to since the early 90s. Like, she just was one of those artists that was smart enough to set that up. 
And those two albums, those few little albums she did, I, I'm sure it was like maybe more. But uh, she said she never had to make music again. She has her family. She's living her life. She's cool. Um, we're not making that kind of money. So you're going to have to do this and do it and be relevant and be lucrative for a long time. And I've seen Eddie go through it, trying to do it. What do you do? as an older person when everybody's looking at these young people and that nobody's your dollars going somewhere else right it's tough it's tough it's it's not fun when you're in it it's all fun and games and it's it's opiate you know it's like but uh then you come down off the high and it's like you get a little older you start losing your hair you, you know it's like can't keep the weight off now it's like you can't put the same costumes on knees aren't working too good you get an injury you know, it's uh, it's uh, not, it's not the most, um, it's not not the best business idea necessarily. But there's so much more involved there that is so much more important. I think so much more fulfilling. Um, if we at some point learn to live with it as a thing, as a part of us, as a as a manifestation of what we are, as opposed to a thing we do for such and such reward, you know. I always think that um, you know you hug someone when you see them, not because you think you're going to get something from it. You hug them because you have to hug them right there in that moment. You hug them, and every time you see them, you hug them. That's just what you do. The hugs don't end because there's no reciprocation. The reciprocation right. happens there in the moment, right? Right. So you don't practice because you think it's going to make you better. You practice because you practice what you do. You know. I get better every year because that's what I do. I just keep moving, you know. I I don't I don't know. There's no good enough. It, it doesn't work that way. It's just about practice, enlightenment, you know, like being involved, trying to take care of my responsibility and helping those that are coming through this to see other alternative options in terms of how to view this, what they're doing, and where to do it too because it can't be we can't if we want to be latin dancers this can't be the only thing available to us you know like there's got to be there's got to be more stuff that's out there that's set up that you can go do and you don't have to go through this mishmash of congress circuits and and salsa scene stuff you know and there is and we we did it for a long time we just didn't we were the only ones doing it and it it didn't yield us a lasting entity that we could have left behind so that others could take advantage of mm. and that's my like you know i wasn't able to set that up in the time that i you know felt that i was trying to set that up but now i come here and tell people you don't have to be here like you don't have to do this 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 way you don't have to you know you don't have to wear heels you don't have to be half naked you don't have to put glitter on your costume you don't have to right if you can dance you can dance in a t-shirt in a baggy t-shirt barefoot i see it in contemporary dance presentations all the time because yeah. they can dance they can dance and they it, it doesn't matter it doesn't right. matter that they have makeup on sometimes they don't sometimes they're naked right if you can dance you can dance you can dance in a t-shirt it doesn't it, it, you know you're on stage you're just it's they're, they're in contemporary, um, there's a dancer called uh, Chaz Buzan. He's uh, like a, a, I don't know if he's Korean. or This dude is a, like a contemporary hip hop, but, but like modern, holy Christ. And this dude is always in t-shirts and, and biker shorts and like barefoot and with mm -hmm. a ponytail. And like sometimes he's in a production where he's got to like get glammed up because there's a theme. But most of the time he's doing the show, these kids are on the floor and he's, He's in his T-shirt, in his gear, right? Hip-hop dancers, they wear their gear and they get on. You know, we're so, like, <laughs> so shiny and sparkly. It's just funny. I find all of that very embarrassing. I, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to wear any of that stuff. I'm glad that I'm in a position that I don't have to. I had to for a while while I was with Eddie. Had to do it. Um, and I did it. And I went through it. And I paid my dues. And thank goodness I'm in a place that I don't, I can wear a T-shirt and I can, do my thing and we're good we have an understanding <laughs>
Yeah, I got to check the time because I'm. Oh yeah, I think I'm. I think. Oh shit! Yeah, I gotta go. Damn, bro. No, I appreciate you. Uh, you gave. I told a you, lot it's more. six yeah, o'clock, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you doing this. Man. Nah, man, I uh, love it. I really love it. I, I really feel like um, more than anything, stuff like this is the real impactful stuff because. You know, uh, last time I did something like this, it, it was resonating for for months, like the snippets. They released these little snippets of pieces of the interview, and it was like people were just buzzing about it for a long time. I was getting other dancers telling me, I'm so glad you're talking about this. You should start a podcast, all this stuff. Uh, yeah, I really feel like it's the, it's the most valuable stuff. And people that I think uh, want to take the time to really know more about you i really appreciate that especially if they choose me to be the subject of something like that i, I really don't take any of that stuff for granted I, i'm really grateful for it because it, it again it allows me to reach people in a different way and to serve and have value other than me getting on stage and trying to impress everyone you know for the rest of my life it, it uh it helps me set things in motion in, in a certain way and talk about things that are important to talk about and, and, and beyond, you know, the tickety tackety, you know, the, the, the babarativity, you know, like the, the regular stuff, the, the Roomba sleeves and the, you know, like <laughs> let's have some conversations that that's beyond that stuff. So. But uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Before, before we depart, um, you have a website, right? Yes. So you do offer some programs online yes, for people yes. to take, right? Do you want to say a yeah, couple words about that? Yeah, it's called uh, afrolatinfunk.dance. That's where the teaching happens. Uh, FrankieMartinez.org is my website. It has all information about where I'm traveling, what classes I'm doing. Uh, Frankie.Martinez on Instagram, Facebook, Frankie Martinez. But um, yeah, the, the, those are the little hubs you know, for... for for finding and staying connected with me. But I do have uh, pre-recorded online classes that people can uh, purchase and you have access to it. As long as you're, you know, the, the, the database is operating, you can refer to that stuff. So it's not like a one-off type of class. And we get into some deep stuff there too. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Anything else you wanna add in closing? Um, just thank you, man, and don't don't anybody stop dancing. Don't stop. It's so early for you now, two years. Uh, hopefully, um, you know this is something I've never got. You know, like uh, opportunities like this to talk to people in different positions and and to uh, it, it should be exciting. It shouldn't be uh, discouraging to think about different possibilities. You know, that should be exciting because anybody can be whatever they want to be. You just have to know that you know even if you are conforming, that that conforming is momentary and that ultimately you're going to move on and move on to something else. And hopefully along that way you find uh, something that's truly fulfilling and you get to run with that, you know. So good luck, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Brother. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it, man. Thank pleasure. You. Absolute Thank pleasure. You.